Welcome to 5G Technology World. I'm Martin Rowe, and today we are meeting with Moshe Sheer and Nir Shapira of Siva DSP, and they're going to tell us about their products and how they use them with 5G and how they use it as part of the 5G signal chain. So, gentlemen, thank you for coming and. Uh, why don't you tell us, a, uh, give us a, a brief, uh, brief introduction to your company, and then we'll start. All right. So first of all, uh, my name is Moshe Shire. I am the VP Marketing for SIVA and Link Corporate Marketing here. Uh, I can give uh, uh, this background about SIVA. I, I will let my colleague Nir present himself, and then we can get into it. So, hi, Martin. I'm uh, Nir Shapira. I'm a business development director for SIVA's uh, mobile broadband uh, unit. So SIVA uh, is an IP company licensing solutions for five main areas. These are communication, as in 5G, that we'll talk about uh, today. It's also short-range uh, short connectivity, as in Bluetooth, Wi-Fi technologies. Then we have vision processing and AI, audio processing, and sense of fusion. Basically, we divide, let's say, the technology that we license within SIVA to two main domains. One is connectivity, and the other is smart sensing, as we call it. So connectivity for us is anything from cellular, that is base stations, that is small cells, that is user equipment, as in smartphones and other mobile broadband, devices and uh, all the way to narrowband IoT, which is also a cellular link, Wi-Fi, 11AX, uh, all the flavors and down from there, and Bluetooth as in uh, dual mode, as in ELE. All this is the connectivity side for SIVA. On the sensing side, these are the other IPs that I mentioned, vision, AI, audio, sense of fusion. What we offer is licensable uh, processors, DSPs, communication platforms, DSP libraries, protocol stacks, different hardware and software components to help our customers build chips. Basically, we are licensing the technologies to chip companies, very much like ARM does in the CPU business, but we focus on signal processing, connectivity, and smart sensing. And we, the business model is royalties out of these licensed technologies, which the customers ship in high volume in their chips, basically. So can you tell me a little bit about the, uh, the 5G signal chain and, and how you implement that? As uh, Moshe mentioned, SIVA, we offer IP for both the UE side and infrastructure side. But essentially, our uh, IP is based on a strong vector DSPs that lie at the heart of the baseband the, the processing. And these ESPs are part of a complete uh, baseband uh, system. We offer a complete IP uh, platform with our DSPs as well as associated uh, accelerators. And these provide for a, a, a complete processing machine for, for baseband uh, uh, signals. So it very much depends on the use case, but typically, our uh, technology processes uh, uh, baseband signals, like IQ samples, and then it can make all the processing uh, chain up to extracting the bits in the receive side, and of course, all the transmit chain on the transmit side. But our uh, IP is uh, uh, very flexible, and our customers, each one customizes the IP for its use case, so a customer can choose to hardwire part of the chain and then can use the uh, RIP for, for the rest. So it's very much a, a, an SDR platform. Can you tell me how an engineer would actually use this um, in terms of the, just the, the steps involved? Um, this is a somewhat new field for me. So I'd like to get an idea of how the engineers would actually implement your, your product into their product. 
So typically a, a, an engagement would start with this engineer or customer giving us its requirements. What we do, and it's also part of the SIVA culture, is we not only uh, sell IPs, we have here an expert system, 5G and modern technologies. So we make the complete analysis and we help the customer to dimension the solution and actually to map the solution to our platform. So we complete the reference design and full analysis of how this uh, customer can uh, uh, go about implementing the technology on our platform. So that would be the first basis. Then when the uh, customer uh, will uh, license our technology, then typically the, our technology is part of the, is at the foundation of the baseboard and the, the processing part of an SOC. So it uh, very much depends on the, uh, the use case. But for example, for, for the infrastructure, and a typical infrastructure customer can instantiate uh, many cores that we offer, like a basement a, a processor machine. And then uh, it, it would uh, essentially be able to, to, to base the entire L1 or five layer uh, computation on the, on the SIVA technology. So how much 5G knowledge does the user mm -hmm. have to have in order to use this? I'm, I'm focusing specifically on 5G. How much knowledge do they have to have and how much of that knowledge that they need to make their product is something that you provide? Okay, so uh, we, we provide the underlying IP platform and vector DSP calls, but as, as you can imagine, 5G is a huge undertaking. And it is well known, for instance, that for example, on, on the infrastructure side, we are partnering with uh, some of the leading uh, T1 OEMs in this field. Nokia and ZTE are two, two examples. These giants, they have like hundreds and thousands of engineers that build their solutions. So what we give them is the, is the uh, platform on which they uh, base the basement SOC. So this is not just platform like a, a soft IP, because essentially it is the IP itself is a soft IP and RTL that we give these uh, guys and they integrate it within their uh, uh, solution. But it's much more than that, it's complete tool chain and the, and the simulation environment and compilers and software libraries and reference signal chains. So, so, so we give a, a wide portfolio of IP and associated software. But still, at the end, the customer would need to, 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 make, to customize that and to integrate that into its uh, a, a solution. How do they do that integration? So typically, they would start with the reference design uh, we give them. So our IP, our DSPs are uh, rich with, they have a lot of connectivity options. So one can instantiate, for, for example, HCI interfaces several of those so so for example if you have an soc with a receiver dsp and some other accelerators so our dsps are very sophisticated memory subsystem and the mechanisms we call siva connect that allows this the engineers and the architects to plan the, the complete uh, solution cluster and to, to do all the uh, architecture of the data movements into and out of the local memories and the lights. You had mentioned that your products work on both the user equipment side and the network equipment side. How do they differ? So maybe I can share a slide for you. Is that okay? Go right ahead. Okay, so you ask about the how we are uh, being able to target both the uh, UE side and the infrastructure side. So here you can see our vector DSP roadmap. As, uh, as you can see, we have been offering uh, several uh, generations, and now the uh, latest one is the uh, SIVA XC16 DSP core, which is our uh, based on a, a new a fourth generation uh, architecture. And as you can see in each uh, generation, we essentially double the sheer performance power of the core. 
So for example, if we take the XC4500, this one has a 64 multiply accumulate units uh, that you can uh, invoke in a single uh, a cycle, uh, every cycle in a single instruction. While the XC16 has four times as much, 266 uh, multiply accumulates, which is, by the way, the strongest vector DSP in the market right now. So besides uh, doubling the sheer performance of the core, in each generation we continue to improve and to add special features to follow up on the evolving GPT standard. So by having an offering for various uh, dimensions, we are able to target different markets. So for example, the XC4500, which is our most popular uh, and successful core for the uh, cellular uh, segment. So this one can be used for both the UE side and for the infrastructure side. As it is, uh, its size is kind of a sweet spot that you can uh, retarget that for many applications. While the XC16 is a much a stronger machine and this one is targeted mainly for infrastructure. So the the user would then use your processing core and then let me make sure I understand this, that the this processing core would then run on silicon and then they could also implement their own, uh, I'll say inputs and outputs, maybe inputs really, uh, to, to, this, um, to this DSP. It's in a sense, putting an application on top of your DSP, is that is that a fair statement? That is correct. Maybe I'll give you an example. Okay, so this is an example of how would a, an architect go about and use our technology to implement, a, let's say, an L, a layer one infrastructure. So you can see here two XC16 cores. And you ask about the interconnect. So you can see that each one of these cores can connect to the main HSI fabric of the chip but they can also instantiate auxiliary AXI interfaces, so each can access the tightly coupled memory of the other core. So that would be these two cores, as an example, would constitute the main computing power of the baseband processor. On top of that, the, the, the architect would add other components to have a complete L1 implementation. So these components can include, for instance, SIVA BX2 cores. So th these, these guys are scalar DSPs that are very good for doing uh, control operations, but also for uh, small DSP tasks. And typically, customer would run most of the state machine of the modem on this 5G sequencer on the BX2 cores. And it will use the SIVA XC16 as number cruncher for basement processing, like for running the FFTs and filtering and, uh, and, and whatnot. On top of that, the architect would add other components uh, and IPs, like, uh, and we also offer these. So we offer a complete uh, offering. So these are a set of uh, co-processor and hardware accelerators. So for example, you, you can see here a vector multiplier unit, and the 5G AI processor for running neural networks that are related to the physical layer. And we have accelerators for a, a forward error correction. So by doing this division of a hardware software partitioning, the, our customer can make, build a complete physical layer a, a solution. We offer all these IP a, components and the customer can choose which one to use. Some customers add their own accelerators so it very much depends on the customer recently siva put out a press release with picocom and can you tell me about how picocom is using your product so picocom picocom or picocom they have licensed xc12 vector dsp which you can see here which is actually our a, a previous uh, generation since they've uh, started the project more, more than a year ago what they do is they, instruct, they implemented a, a, a baseband cluster which is very much similar to the one that I've just uh, showed you, but instead of having an XC16, it has a XC12. 
and the, they have also li licensed some of our uh, other uh, IPs there. And these guys are uh, experts in uh, designing uh, uh, modems. So specifically, this uh, PicoCom, they were able to do all the software uh, development for the complete modem chain based on our uh, libraries, of course. But this is a good example of that uh, we are working with, with different kinds of customers. So PicoCom is a small scale company, relatively a few dozens of uh, engineers, not more. And they were able in, in a, a year's time frame uh, to, to, to jumpstart a development by uh, using uh, our IPs. And they have, uh, and, and they will soon be ready with, with the solution uh, in the market. But we also engage and partner with, with, the, with, with the, the likes of Nokia, for instance. So they like also license our core and they have a, a much bigger organization and project there and, and they're doing, a, they're targeting, of course, the macro sales. But essentially, the, the, the model is, is a similar. Okay, Moshe, you wanted something, you wanted to add something, so please go ahead. Yeah, just uh, perhaps some uh, remarks for the end. So we spoke both about the infrastructure side and the UE or the smartphone uh, side. And Siva is shipping already those XC12, XC16 uh, base station solutions to customers like Nokia, uh, ZTE, which are public and, and others which are not. Uh, PicoCom was announced last week, uh, as you said uh, as well. And on the UE side, we provide uh, to customers uh, such as uh, Unisoc, formerly known as Threat Room, which are shipping very high volume to uh, basic and mid-range uh, smartphones. Uh, we are uh, in about one third of all smartphones uh, worldwide. And uh, last thing to mention uh, really is that with uh, the COVID-19 situation these days, many countries are looking for a way to uh, boost the economy. And just today I read about uh, South Korea, uh, that one of the areas they are going to boost is 5G. So I guess many countries will try to find big projects to encourage uh, employment and technology development. 5G will be one of them. AI is another, for example. So uh, we really anticipate uh, uh, renewed interest in our technologies for 5G. Okay, well, thank you very much. And I look forward to talking to you again. Okay. Thank you, Martin. Bye. Our pleasure. Thank you.